Okay, hello, this is Roberto Daly from Textorc World Headquarters. Today we're going to be doing a video tutorial on creating realistic renders um, using Blender, um, using your SolidWorks files. Um, typically, when people do renders on SolidWorks, they use a SolidWorks rendering engine, which is great. It produces realistic images, um, but we want to push that realism a little bit further, it's kind of like a photo quality, and for that, we're going to be using a renderer called Blender. Um, as you can see here, the lighting is absolutely fantastic. A lot of times, people We'll see these and mistake them for photos. Um, they're great for just, you can put game assets in them, you can actually make this look more like photos from the match, or you can use them as visualizations, so it works great either way. Um, Blender itself is a free open source program, so um, you can just download it off the internet and then you can be good to go with this. Um, so we're gonna show you in this tutorial, first of all, how to move your files from SolidWorks into Blender, and then once you're there, how are you gonna get started by rendering them? To start, we're gonna have the file that we want in SolidWorks that we wanna render. Um, right now I have the catapult open from last year's robot, and we're gonna wanna export that as STLs. So, excuse me, I'm gonna go file, save as. And usually I have a folder, reserved for this. Um, one thing when you're saving an assembly as a whole bunch of STLs, um, it's going to save all the individual parts as individual files, so you can get a ton of parts. So usually I like to have a folder that's already ready for it so they can contain all of those files. Um, another thing to keep in mind is when you're converting things to STLs, um, it does use a lot of processing power, so I usually only do little sub-assemblies of the robot first. I won't usually do the whole robot because that will eat up my processing power or possibly crash the computer. So I'm going to change this to STL, and I'm ready in the file I want, so I'm going to click Save. This is going to take a few seconds. Processing, and process complete, sweet. So now I'm going to open up Blender. Um, so this is the default scene in Blender. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click A twice, so that I can select everything, and then I'm going to click Delete. Um, and now that I'm here, I'm going to click File, import, we're going to import those STLs, so I'm going to go back to that file folder that I had, and I'm going to click A again, and that selects all of them, import STL, should take a few seconds, and there you go. Um, now your SolidWorks file is in blood are ready to be rendered. Uh, so first let me get three um, to change the view, and then five to get into orthographic view. I'm going to click R to rotate this so that it's level with the Plane, make it 90 degrees. Uh, I'm going to click G to translate it over. And then if I want to look around, I can click on the scroll wheel and that will allow me to um, turn around my viewport. So this is almost ready to render. First thing we got to change though to get there is we have to move this to a cycles render. That's the path tracing model that makes um, the renders look so nice. Um, Another thing is the rendering is very processor heavy, so a lot of times right when I get started, I'll go down here to performance and then change this to um, about half the threads of my computer so that way I'm not using the whole thing. Um, otherwise, it can be really um, slow to do other things while you're rendering. Um, and this is good to go, so all I have to do is click on this little circle and then change that to rendered. And already you can start to see the effects. Uh, the lighting already looks great, even though it's just a clay model and stuff, you can see that there's some good ambient occlusion going on. I want to change the world to make it a little bit lighter, so I'm going to click on the world thing here, and then click use nodes, and then change this to a lighter color. Let's make that a light gray. Okay, as you can see, this is already starting to look good. Um, it's a progressive render, so the longer you leave it on, the more accurate it'll get. Uh, but now I want to add material to specifically one of these parts. So click Z to get into wireframe mode, and I'm going to right click on that piece, and then I'm going to click the forward slash to isolate it. This is my piece now. Now I want to add a material to it, so I'm going to click on this button here, and then click Add New. Um, so there is a material editor over here, but we're going to use the node editor. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this window up, and then this button down here, we're going to change that to Node Editor. So you can see here, here's the material that we added, just the default setup. It's got a default diffuse, and we want to add like a white powder coat to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this diffuse, slide it over, and then add a mix shader. And then below this, we're going to add a glossy shader. And the glossy is just a reflection shader. So we're going to mix the diffusion and glossy to get kind of a nice white uh, paint look. 
Um, and then if we want to push the realism a little bit more, we're going to use what's called a uh, Fresnel input. So we go to input Fresnel, which is spelled as Fresno. Uh, if you've ever worked with optics or anything, um, the Fresnel equations define how much light reflects at different angles of incidence. And so that's just going to give us a little more of a realistic reflection if we pull this node here, click on that, and then drag it over to the one here. And that'll control how much diffuse is being used depending on the angle of incidence. So render that. It's already starting to look good. And then you're pretty much good. Um, you can just go through your, your objects, right click in pieces, and slowly add materials to them. Um, if you want to have multiple um, objects have the same material, you just have to click, right click on, and shift click on the next ones. Um, and then the last one you click will be the one with the material you want. And you click Control L, which creates a link. And then you can do materials. So these all have the same material. Um, now, one thing that can be a problem for some people is creating all the materials that are in your robot can be like a haphazard process trying to get them all right. So we've actually simplified that process for you here at Texas Torque. We actually put a file online uh, called materials. You can look in the link below in the description. Um, and this materials blends once you download it. It's going to have preset materials for all the types of things you need, like uh, white powder coat, black powder coat, uh, black mat, um, the sim color, a few other parts that are going to be kind of standard in your robot, just to ease up your time with uh, creating these renders. And to, so to get at that, is what you're going to do is you're going to click in the file. You're going to file append. And so I'm going to go find where I downloaded that material, Google Drive, materials. And so once you click on that, it's going to let you choose what you want to take from that file. So I'm going to click here on material and then I'm click A to select all of them. And so now I have all of these materials that are going to be in the library. So, like, so now what I can do is I click on, say I want to add Lexan to these two pieces. Now I go here and I click on clear Lexan. I just accidentally click law. Clear Lexan, control L to link those materials. And now when I render this, this is gonna have a nice, you have a nice Lexan material there that looks realistic. And so that's it. Um, with this system, you can go through, add materials to your robot, set up a little bit of lighting, and then it's gonna look great. And you can get fantastic renders that are, um, say you wanna do visualization like this, if you wanna do something that looks like a photo, um, you can pull in the, um, the game environment, do all sorts of stuff. As I said, Blender's a great tool combined with SolidWorks and you really got really got something special going. So thank you for watching.